Professor Roland Hark was, by all accounts, a reasonable man. He liked his coffee strong, his afternoons quiet, and his interstellar flights punctual. So, when the Galactic Council of Mutual Development offered him the prestigious role of head professor at the newly established University of Galactic Fortitude, he wasn't sure whether to laugh or run. But curiosity got the better of him. Humans had a knack for that sort of thing. The offer was clear enough, an intergalactic university created to toughen up a new generation of aliens who were, quite frankly, becoming too soft. It had been decided at a particularly irritable council meeting that far too many species were lounging about, consuming more resources than they contributed. The solution? Send in a human from Earth, a death worlder as they were affectionately known in galactic circles, someone whose life was so absurdly dangerous that the very idea of survival for them was considered an Olympic-level achievement. Maybe these soft-skinned, six-legged lazabouts will get their act together when they see what it's like to live on a planet where even the rain can kill you, one council member had remarked, much to the horror of the others. We want them to actually survive this training course, aren't death worlders about ending lives, and the course being that tough, our most seasoned combat warriors would barely pass. Another interjected, raising some concern amongst the other members. The Chancellor of the Galactic Council addressed their concerns. These humans are also compassionate, so there is a good chance they would not let a student die. Most still had doubts, but something needed to be done with this next galactic generation. Thus, Professor Hark found himself standing at the gates of the newly built university, staring up at its imposing architecture, a blend of sleek galactic design and unfortunate bureaucratic decision-making. It was a monstrosity, and it was all his. The first day of class was always difficult, Roland mused, as he entered the lecture hall clutching his data pad. The hall itself was a marvel of alien design, its walls pulsed with a faint organic glow, and the seats adjusted themselves automatically to accommodate anything from a gelatinous Thlermian to a twelve-foot-high Jarnarkian. Holographic displays floated lazily in the air, listing the class schedule. Survival 101, Intro to Death World Habitats. The students, however, were another matter entirely. In the front row, there was a group of what looked like sentient puddles of goo. Behind them sat a towering insectoid creature whose mandibles clacked nervously. A cluster of jellyfish-like beings floated near the ceiling, and off to one side a sentient cloud blinked at him. A couple of tentacled species sat sprawled out in what could only be described as a bored mess of limbs. All of them looked at Roland with the same expression, barely contained terror. Good morning, Roland said cheerfully, clapping his hands. The students flinched in unison. Welcome to your first day at the University of Galactic Fortitude. I'll be your professor in the finer points of not dying which, I understand, is something many of you have been avoiding in the least productive way possible. Oh, and there will be no checking your galactic socials while in this course, or drifting off watching alien shows, so hand over all your personal data pads. The whole class let out a collective sigh, as if he had dropped a nuclear bomb right on them, getting rude glances from the aliens that actually had eye stalks or otherwise. A hesitant tentacle raised in the back. E excuse me, Professor Hark, stammered the owner, a gelatinous creature that resembled a quivering pile of grape jelly. B but is it true that on Earth the atmosphere itself can poison you? Roland smiled, rubbing his chin thoughtfully. Ah, you must mean oxygen. Yeah, it's pretty toxic. But we manage. Builds character. There was an audible squelch as several Goube students oozed back into their seats, looking faintly ill. One of the floating jellyfish blinked its eye stalks. And the beasts? We heard you bring creatures with you? Beasts, Roland echoed, confused. Then he remembered. Oh, you mean pets, right. I brought along a couple, thought they'd be useful for demonstrations. A cat and a dog. The room collectively stiffened at the mention of these alien terms. A dog? 
one of the insectoid students squeaked, as if the word itself was a threat. Yeah, you'll meet them soon enough. They're great, very loyal. Well, the dog is, at least. The cat's more... independent. Roland waved his hand dismissively. But don't worry about that. Let's focus on the basics. As the first week progressed, it became glaringly obvious that the Galactic Council had gravely underestimated the chasm between human toughness and the pampered existence of most alien species. Every day felt like some sort of cosmic joke to Roland. What was routine back on Earth seemed like the stuff of nightmares to his students. Take, for instance, Day 3, when Roland introduced them to basic animal husbandry. To the aliens, this was an invitation to face their greatest fears. Roland stood in the middle of the classroom with a medium-sized kennel from which faint yipping noises could be heard. The students had already pressed themselves against the farthest wall of the room. Meet Max, Roland said, opening the kennel door and letting out a shaggy, tail-wagging mutt. Max, a friendly but overly enthusiastic dog, bounded around the room with pure, unrestrained joy, sniffing everything in sight. His happy barks echoed off the walls. The reaction was immediate. One of the gelatinous puddles shrieked and tried to slide under a desk. The insectoid student fainted, and the sentient cloud emitted a high-pitched whine, attempting to float out of the room. What is that thing? screeched a trembling student with six eyes and a head that resembled a squid. It's just a dog, Roland said, exasperated. Completely harmless. Look, he's friendly. He pointed as Max licked one of the desk legs. That's licking? Another student gasped in horror. Roland sighed. Look, it's nothing to worry about. Max here just wants to say hi. He's not going to eat you. Well, as long as you feed him first, just joking. The students weren't convinced. One of the jellyfish creatures chimed in. We heard rumors about cats that they can turn invisible and kill you in your sleep. Ah, yes, that old rumor is my favorite one from you aliens. Although once I did wake up in my bed with a cat paw over my mouth anyway, next on the list, Roland said with a grin. He clapped his hands again, and from another carrier emerged Luna, his black and white house cat. Luna blinked lazily at the room full of terrified aliens, stretched and promptly sat down, licking her paw in disinterest. The reaction this time was even more dramatic. No, not a cat, and it's doing something with its paws. Run! One of the students cried, flinging themselves against the wall. The sentient cloud flickered in what could only be described as terror, and the puddles of goo made strange burbling noises that might have been sobs. What in the galaxy is your problem? Roland muttered, completely baffled. It's just a cat. Honestly, she couldn't care less about you lot. But the claws, whispered a voice from the back. We've heard stories. They slice through steel. They shred bone with a flick of their paw. Roland knelt down to Luna, who was now licking her tail. This little thing. She's more interested in sunbeams than bones, trust me. The students exchanged looks, none of them reassured. The Galactic Council, meanwhile, had insisted on rigorous field survival training. Roland was initially amused by the thought of getting these students to do anything remotely challenging, but by week four he was beginning to understand just how cushy their lives had been. The first challenge, traversing a simulated forest. Roland had grown up hiking through forests back on Earth, so this seemed like a fun way to introduce his students to practical survival. What he didn't account for was that most of these species had evolved in environments that were, well, too perfect. Controlled climates, no predators, and certainly no concept of roughing it. The simulation turned on with a holographic hum. Trees and plants materialized, along with the sound of chirping birds. Roland glanced at the students who were all standing frozen, wide-eyed and trembling. All right, first things first, Roland said, hands on his hips. We'll start with basic shelter building. You know, in case of a storm or some wildlife that's not too friendly. 
W wildlife, stammered one of the students. Do you mean monsters? Roland rolled his eyes. Not monsters, just animals, you know, like rabbits or squirrels, harmless things. A student in the back fainted. Seriously, Roland muttered under his breath. For the next hour, Roland attempted to guide his students through what should have been a simple lesson, but each rustle of leaves sent them into a frenzy, and at one point a holographic squirrel popped up, causing several students to flee the simulation entirely. Roland found himself standing in the middle of the simulation, a half-built shelter at his feet, and Max the dog running in happy circles. This is ridiculous, he said, shaking his head. You lot wouldn't last five minutes on earth. By week eight, the students had stopped complaining. They were too tired, too shocked, too traumatized by the routine horrors of what Roland considered normal. There had been injuries, mostly from tripping over their own limbs or fainting at the sight of a household broom, but there had also been progress, slight, but progress nonetheless. One day, while drinking his coffee and reviewing their survival scores, Roland noticed a small group of students practicing shelter building. They weren't good at it, but at least they were trying. Well, would you look at that, Roland said, taking a sip of his coffee. Luna, lounging on his lap, gave a bored yawn. Max wagged his tail by his side. Maybe there's hope for them after all, Roland muttered, scratching Luna behind the ears. She responded with a slow blink and resumed her nap, clearly unimpressed by the progress of the alien students. It wasn't long before word of Roland's unique teaching methods began to spread beyond the university. The Galactic Council had initially expected their new Death Worlder professor to whip the students into shape with a few stern lectures and maybe a survival drill or two. What they hadn't anticipated was the sheer level of terror the students were experiencing, and strangely enough, the results it was producing. One afternoon, Roland received a message from the Chancellor of the Galactic Council himself, a stern-looking Yarnarkian with too many arms and not enough patience. Professor Hark, the Chancellor began, his image flickering in front of Roland's desk, we have received... Interesting reports about your curriculum. The council is intrigued. Roland raised an eyebrow. Intrigued how? Well, to put it bluntly, the students appear to be terrified out of their minds. Roland leaned back in his chair, glancing over at Max, who was gnawing on a toy shaped like a small alien, something the students had given him as a peace offering, hoping it would distract the beast. He then looked at the simulation reports of students making gradual improvements. Terrified, sure, but they're learning. The Chancellor's multiple arms twitched in a sign of frustration. Learning? Reports suggest several students have fled the university grounds entirely. Some refused to leave their quarters, claiming they'd been scarred for life by, what did they call it? Ah, uh, yes, the Earth Dog of Doom. Max, he's a sweetheart, Roland chuckled, shaking his head. And the cat, the Chancellor added, shuddering visibly, has been labelled by several species as a shadow demon. That's Luna. She's mostly lazy, unless you annoy her. Then, well, yeah, she scratches. Professor, the Chancellor leaned in, his expression severe. This is a serious matter. We assigned you to toughen these students up, not break their spirits entirely. We need them to be functional members of the galactic community. Roland smiled, leaning forward with an air of calm confidence. Chancellor, I promise you, these students will be ready. Toughening up doesn't happen overnight. Back on Earth, we didn't become resilient by sitting around doing nothing. We faced challenges every day. We had to adapt and fast. That's what your students are starting to learn and believe it or not, they're getting better. The Chancellor squinted at him, clearly sceptical. Better? How so? Take yesterday's assignment, Roland said, pulling up a report on his data pad. We simulated a hostile alien environment, acid rain, carnivorous plants, unstable ground. 
Most of the students would have run screaming on day one, but this time they built shelters. They stuck together. Sure, a few of them screamed a bit when the plants moved, but no one got eaten. The Chancellor remained silent, clearly processing this unexpected information. No one got eaten, he repeated cautiously. Exactly. Progress. The Chancellor sighed, rubbing one of his many temples. Very well, Professor. We will continue to monitor your progress, but I must warn you, there are limits to how much trauma the students can endure. If we see any signs of permanent psychological damage, we will intervene. Roland gave a nonchalant shrug. I'll keep them in one piece. They might not like me now, but they'll thank me later. With that, the holographic image of the Chancellor flickered and vanished, leaving Roland alone with his thoughts, and Max, who had triumphantly torn the head off his alien chew toy. Good boy, Roland muttered, tossing the headless toy into the corner. You're doing great. I think even the adult's aliens would struggle with my level one basic course. As the semester wore on, a strange thing began to happen. The students, who had once been too afraid to leave their rooms, too terrified of even basic earth creatures, started to show signs of actual resilience. The turning point came during one of their more dangerous training exercises, where Roland had set up a simulation of Earth's most infamous environments, the Australian outback. It was a harsh, sun-scorched landscape dotted with venomous creatures, unpredictable weather patterns, and for some inexplicable reason, a towering hologram of a kangaroo, the alien technology made them seem real, very real. This, Roland said with his usual nonchalance, is what we call the Outback. Now, for you lot, this might look like the fiery pits of an apocalyptic death world. But to Earthlings, well, it's just where we go camping. The students exchanged uneasy glances, already sweating from the simulated heat. One of the insectoid students raised a trembling hand. And we are supposed to survive this. Not only survive, Roland said with a grin, but thrive. The exercise began in chaos as expected. The venomous holographic snakes and spiders elicited a symphony of alien screams. A sentient puddle of goo tried to evaporate under the sun, while one of the jellyfish floated aimlessly, terrified of the ground. But something shifted. Roland watched, mildly impressed, as one of the students, an eight-limbed creature named Zith, picked up a sharp stick and started swatting at the holographic creatures. Another student, who had fainted at the sight of Max just weeks ago, actually managed to craft a makeshift shelter using rocks and digital leaves. Within hours, the students were coordinating with each other, building small communities, protecting each other from the simulated wildlife. Sure, there were still moments of panic, particularly when a holographic emu charged through their camp, but no one ran away screaming this time. They stayed. They fought. By the end of the exercise, Roland stood in front of them with his arms crossed, nodding approvingly. Well done, he said, his voice calm but laced with pride. You survived one of Earth's deadliest environments, and not only that, you worked together. You adapted. That's what it means to be resilient. The students, panting and exhausted, exchanged looks of disbelief. They had done it. Somehow they had made it through the simulation with minimal injury and no fainting spells. One student, a Thlermian puddle of goo, who had been particularly squeamish, slid forward after somehow ending up in one of the kangaroo's pouches, trembling but determined. Pif professor does this mean... We're like you now, like humans? Roland laughed, shaking his head. Not quite. But you're getting there. That was an interesting way to survive. Riding around in a kangaroo pouch? Never thought of that one. Roland scratching his head at what he had just witnessed. The students looked at each other, a new sense of camaraderie and confidence bubbling up among them. For the first time, they didn't look at Roland with fear. They looked at him with respect.
As the semester drew to a close, the University of Galactic Fortitude had transformed from a school of timid, lazy alien students into a proving ground for survival. The students had faced trials they could never have imagined, venomous creatures, hostile environments, and yes, even the terrifying creatures called dogs and cats. One afternoon, as Roland was packing up his office, preparing for a well-earned break back on Earth, a group of students approached him hesitantly. Zith, now regarded as something of a leader among them, stepped forward, clearing his throat. Professor Hark, Zith began, we just wanted to say thank you for everything. We never thought we could survive any of this, but you showed us that we could. Roland smiled, leaning back in his chair. You did the hard work. I just gave you a little push. Zith glanced nervously at Max, who was lounging under the desk, and Luna, who was curled up in the corner, glaring at everyone. And, uh, could you maybe leave the creatures behind when you go? Roland laughed. Don't worry, they're coming with me. But hey, if you ever want to come to Earth, you're welcome. We've got more where they came from. The students collectively shuddered, but managed weak smiles. As they turned to leave, Zith looked back one last time. Maybe one day, he said with a nervous chuckle, we'll be ready for Earth. Roland grinned, picking up his thermos of coffee and eating his blueberry chock chip raspberry swirl bran muffin. I'll be waiting. And with that, the first class of Galactic Fortitude graduates left, not as the soft, pampered creatures they had once been, but as something tougher. Not quite death worlders, but close enough. Roland sipped his coffee and thought to himself, well, maybe the galaxy isn't doomed after all, and let out a big wet juicy fart that may have been a little too wet.